This is your Barbados Today evening update for Thursday, May 5. Following reports of data security breaches of some commercial bank and credit union customers, the Barbados Bankers Association is given the assurance that financial institutions have moved swiftly to take action. In a statement today, the association said the data violation indirectly affected a very small percentage of commercial bank customers and that the breaches did not result from unauthorized access to customers' personal information held by the commercial banks in question. It explained that the breaches involved a small number of online retailers whose websites are used by customers for online shopping. The association, however, assured it is working to ensure data safety and mitigate the novel methods by which hackers seek to gain access to cardholders' data. Labour Minister Colin Jordan today advised trade unions to assess their future. He made the comments while speaking at a tree planting exercise hosted by the Barbados Workers' Union at its Solidarity House headquarters today. Jordan told the gathering that given major changes in recent months, including those impacting the world of work, the trade union movement will have to ponder its role. It is a question that must be given some thought. There must be discussion on it. I know there's already discussion locally and as well as globally. But that thought has to occupy the minds of those who work, who understand worker collective action and those who understand the development of society. Minister Jordan stressed that even in the face of much societal change, trade unions must maintain their principles. And in the context of workers, workers' organizations, the world of work, the value of work, some of those concepts, some of those principles that have to remain foundational are things like the right to come together as a group to bargain to recognize that there are power dynamics at play. And so the idea of collective bargaining has to remain a foundational principle, even as life changes, even as societies change, even as the world of work changes. The Sanitation Service Authority says it's working around the clock to get garbage collection back on track. The SSA's Public Relations Officer, Carl Alf Padmore, says the process has been affected by recent heavy rains, among other issues, but he assures the matter is being rectified. We are saying to the public, give us a couple of days. Uh, I believe over the next week or so, we should regularize um, collection. It has been challenging and we have been working around the clock, so it's not a case of a lack of collections. In the latest COVID-19 update, the Best of Santos Public Health Laboratory identified 534 new COVID-19 cases, 234 males and 300 females from the 1,541 tests conducted on Wednesday. The cases comprise 130 persons under the age of 18 and 404 who were 18 years and older. There were 104 people in isolation facilities, while 3,243 were in home isolation. The death toll from the virus stands at 402. There's regional and international news after this short break. New Brunswick sardine fillets, boneless, ready to eat. Her Son, hold on, hold on, one more. This is our game. Let's see. And available in bold new flavors. Brunswick sardine fillets are giving sardines a new vibe. More oxygen means more energy means more adventure. Cure Oxygen, natural spring water infused with more oxygen to improve your energy, immunity and performance. The next generation of hydration. Cure Oxygen, nature's ultimate water. To regional news, the Central Bank of Trinidad and Tobago says the country's short-term outlook is expected to improve this year. But even so, it notes that a significant increase in COVID-19 virus caseloads could put a strain on this improvement. Sunil Lala of TTT News reports. Growth in the domestic economy is projected to strengthen, driven by expansions in the energy sector. 
This according to the Central Bank in its 2021 annual economic survey released on Wednesday. It says activity in the non-energy sector is also expected to improve following the gradual reopening of the economy since the third quarter of 2021 and the broad-based rollback of restrictive measures at the end of the first quarter of 2022. But the central bank says there are risks to this outlook, including a flare-up in virus caseloads, which it says may elicit a fresh round of containment measures that hamper business activity, curtail employment and place further strains on available fiscal resources. The central bank also predicts that the industrial relations climate is anticipated to be more tense in 2022 due to the rise in the cost of living. It adds that despite improving domestic economic activity, labor market conditions may remain constrained until virus caseloads are effectively contained and vaccinated rates increase among the working age population. According to the central bank, domestic economic activity remained mostly constrained in 2021, though signs of improvement were evident. It notes that gross domestic product grew by 0.9% during the first three quarters of 2021. The growth, though, mostly came from the non-energy sector, which grew by 3.6%, compared to a 44 decline in the energy sector. On the international front, a new World Health Organization report says almost three times as many people have died as a result of COVID-19. The official death toll from the first two years of the coronavirus pandemic is about 5.4 million. But according to a new World Health Organization report, the actual number is around three times higher. The UN body said on Thursday there were 14.9 million excess deaths associated with COVID-19 by the end of 2021. Excess deaths are the number of deaths that occurred beyond the number expected in non-pandemic years. One reason for the jump deaths that were missed in countries without adequate reporting. Even pre-pandemic, around 6 in 10 deaths around the world were not registered, according to the WHO. William Sambori is with the WHO's Department of Data and Analytics. We do need better data. So one of the reasons why we focus on the excess mortality is because we know the, the, the testing data is inconsistent across countries. And we know that there are many people who died before they were tested. So we do need death certificate data to ascertain uh, the, the cause of death uh, attribution in more detail. The report said almost half of the deaths not counted until now were in India, suggesting 4.7 million people died there as a result of the pandemic so far, well beyond India's count of less than 500,000. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.